Hello and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. This is the new World War II Grand Strategy by Paradox. And I'm going in pretty blind. I've had a quick look at some other people's uh, starts, seen roughly what kind of things you can do. I've had a quick look around the UI myself, but this is pretty much blind. I will, in between episodes, be look going off, looking up strategies, things, seeing what kind of things we can do, seeing what kind of cool stuff that I'm missing. But this first episode is blind-ish. So, let's have a look at the country we're going to be playing. We're going to be playing as Portugal. Why are we playing as Portugal? Well, I want to play as someone a little bit different. I don't want to play as one of the big nations. I want to play as a nation who had enough influence that they could be part of the war if someone was to really push for it. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Also, I wanted to play as a nation where if we did something wrong, we would get punished. And we would be able to... Uh, you know, start again with the knowledge of what we did wrong. I want something where our mistakes are actually, um, they have consequences. So, what is Portugal at the start of the game? At the start of the game? Portugal is, well, they are non-aligned. They have no allegiance to any kind of big political party. They're just kind of, whatever. They do, however, have a small communist, uh, party, and a small fascist party, and a small def a democratic party so we can kind of decide where we want to go um, the democratic party does start with no actual uh, power so if we want to go that way we'd really have to push for it and I'm thinking we're probably not gonna go that way although if we did we'd have definitely have some options because Spain usually at the start of the game has a civil war and if we really want to pick a side before that happens I would imagine I think we want to pick a side so that we can start maybe an invasion of Spain. I don't know if that's a possibility, but I want to see what's going on with that. We would also, we have some land down here in Africa. And if we were on the uh, on the democratic side, we would probably have Belgium, France, uh, United Kingdom all on our side. So we'd kind of all be grouped down here. We'd all be um, working together. If we were to say join um, the communist side with presumably Soviet Union, we would um, we would probably be a little bit hostile to these people. And if we were to join the fascist side, we would almost definitely be hostile to everybody around us. What's South Africa out of curiosity? Cur curiosity. Uh, they are democratic. So yeah, we would probably be hostile to everybody. So we'll see how it goes. We're probably not going to pick an allegiance right now. We're going to just try to stay neutral for as long as we can. Um, what I would like to do, though, is for all of these troops here, uh, I would like to put them in an army. Yes, and we can have a look at the general system. Do we have any generals? Right click to assign selected divisions? No. Uh, we might not have any generals is the other option. Uh, click to assign a commander. There we are. We have one general. We have... Uh, is that Jose Vincent? Okay. Uh, we'll put him in charge. I suppose can we only have one and we'll create a front line so click on the borders uh, click on one of the borders against another country to set the assigned front along the entire border right leg and drag the mouse on one of the borders against country to see the front uh, short interval on its okay so we want a border with Spain I think yeah we want them to just be kind of uh, solidifying the border with Spain can we add those guys to the army how do we add to a current can we just say all of you are part of this army um, what what can we do with these guys? Um, not entirely sure. Add to army? Uh, anything here? Nope. Okay, we'll work that out later. It's not important. We're not going to actually attack Spain. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to have a look at some of these things. And traditional kind of uh, paradox style. We're just going to have a look and see what we've got going on with this kind of stuff. So, we got some research available. we got some technology. Um... Most of our technology, we're a little bit behind time. So on our infantry, we're kind of up there in weapons. We're, we're on basic infantry weapons, we're on time. But for the rest of it, we're not really, we haven't researched any of that. For support battalions, we're a little bit behind as well. For armor, we're very behind. We don't even know how to make great war tanks. So we are significantly behind. If we want to go armor, we need to really start now and ramp it up very quickly for artillery we have uh, some artillery but again a little bit behind land doctrine is kind of what we're wanting to 
from what I can tell, this is how we want our armies to go. What we want them to do. So, let's have a look at the different options. We have Mobile Warfare, which locks out Superior Firepower, Grand Battle Plan Doctrine, and Mass Assault Doctrine, which I assume is the rest of these. So this one gives us extra breakthrough bonus, extra planning speed, uh, extra division speed, and uh, we lose less organization when moving. Okay. The superior firepower one gives us um, soft. All frontline battalions get soft attack plus 20%, and enables a tactic uh, suppressive barrage. Um, possibly. This one looks more like it's got a lot of artillery stuff in it. Was our artillery very good? Yeah, it was kind of up to date. Maybe that could be alright. This one looks like, uh, just from the symbols, that it's going to have a lot of, like, tank stuff, a lot of mobilized infantry, which we're kind of behind on. We have no tanks, and we have no motorized in infantry, so we'll maybe leave that for just now. Trench warfare, max entrenchment, we can go, can go up, and our entrenchment speed can go up. Uh, so we can do a lot of planning here. We maybe get into Grand Assaults, we start bake break through. This might not be the best plan overall. But this might work better for us because we only have infantry. Or Mass Assault Doctrine. Perfect weapons are overrated. Large number of good enough weapons is a path to victory. So this gives us extra reinforcement rates. Um, allows us to have less supplies needed for each kind of thing. Um... Allows us to have some extra entrenchment, and then we can just go mass mobilization, get a lot of uh, attrition lowering and stuff. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, extensive planning and preparation, perfect weapons. Um, I think we're going to go for mass assault. I think that's probably the only one that we're going to be able to do. Either that or grand battle plan, one of the two. What's grand battle plan offer us? It offers us some uh, mechanized stuff if we go down here. And it offers us kind of guerrilla tactics if we go down here. Some, like, infiltration stuff. Mm, okay. L uh, night attack bonuses. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to go mass assault, though. Let's see how it goes. Reinforce rate, plus 2%. That's what we're going to try researching. Cool. Next research. Um, we could look at some naval stuff. We are a little bit behind on naval stuff as well. We only have one class of uh, ship, and um, okay, it was a class of seven destroyers launched in the early 30s. They were built in both Portugal and the UK. Two of the ships were sold to Columbia in 1938. Uh, yeah, okay, so they're just kind of early 30 ships. Okay, naval doctrine. Maybe we try and get our naval stuff going. We probably want to get quite a lot of naval stuff going because we have, well, quite a lot of navy. A uh, strong fleet focused around battleships means that we are forced to be reckoned with when deployed at sea. As stronger naval opponents, we can focus on tying up their fleets and destroying supply lines to starve their war machine. Or base strike with a strong focus on carriers and a support. No enemy will be outside our reach, whether on land or at sea. Um, I think we want to just try and get that biggest amount of fleet that we could that we can, like just a really l large amount of battleships, and just try and hold our coast. I think that's a good idea. Maybe. I don't know. We'll try it. Um, air. We're actually relatively up to date on air. Maybe we want to focus on some of that a little bit. Air Doctrine. Do we want to go anywhere into this? Um, battlefield Support. Probably not where we want it to go. Operational Integrity. Tactical Bombers are flexible and perform both ground support and regular bombing. Or by bombing enemy factories, we can seriously hinder the war machine. I don't know where to go here, so we'll leave it for just now. Engineering, um, just straight up Lore's research time. Could be quite good to get straight away, just Lore's research time overall. Uh, we can't start, uh, at we could start atomic research right now, but no real reason to because we got a head of time penalty. Yep. So I think just extra research time seems like a good uh, thing to go into straight away, and then maybe mechanical computing. Just continue lowering research time. Industry, we could also go for. We could try and get our production going well. We try and get some th synthetic oil going. Maybe get some construction speed going up. And maybe we'll focus on production efficiency. Try and get some of that. I'm not sure what's good, but we'll try this right now. And we'll see how it goes. Three civilian factories. Okay. How many do we have free? We have six free. Okay. Now, I have heard that it might be best for um, 
like the first thing that you focus on for factories to go for more civilian factories. As your civilian factories are used to build everything, including your military factories. So that could be an interesting idea. So we just kind of keep building civilian factories. So we get like six of them building more factories. All right, we have to choose where we want to build them. So um, let's try to go a little bit inland, but or do we want them on the coast so they have more supply? I don't know if that's a thing. Um, okay, let's just shift look to build the maximum of buildings, but we already have the, like, we're just one off the maximum. So we'll just build in here. Uh, and that means that ten, zero out of ten are available for construction. Oh, I see. So each kind of slot only had one space. I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. So we're just building one civilian factory there. Do you want to build uh, the maximum heat? Well, maybe we'll build one here as well. Then we'll build military factories here. There we go. That's cool. We've got a bit of a production line going. We'll see how that goes. We have three dockyards. They're not doing anything. Okay. Uh, presumably that's because we're not actually building any ships right now. Um, okay, so how many factories do we have free from military factories? We have zero. So we don't quite have enough production for either of these, presumably. Uh, yeah. Like, we're not fitting our need. Uh, we could also try building ships. Our factories current, our naval dock here is currently aren't doing anything. So we might as well build some ships. What do we want to build? Do we want to build convoys? I think we have enough already. Uh, so I guess we probably just want to build the best destroyers that we can. Because those are the best ships we currently have, I think. So we'll build some of those and we'll put as many naval dockyards as we have on it. So we need oil, we need steel, we need aluminium, and we need more steel. Okay, cool. Uh, no national focus set. So this is basically much where you want your entire, this is where you want your focus of your nation to be at a certain time. And you should set it at the start as well. And it takes a amount of time to finish and then you work on the next one and all that sort of stuff. So. Uh, I want to scroll along to the right here. Have a look at the political effort. And this is kind of an interesting bit to have a look at. Because it allows you to maybe push towards different ways. So we could go for collectivist um, ethos. Which would lower democracy support in our party. Like in our country. Or we can go liberty. Which would, um, it would give us the national spirit liberty ethos. Which grants trade deal opinion factor plus 20% with uh, presumably with democratic people or is that just all trade deals i don't know we can go neutrality focus try really going neutral maybe does that mean people wouldn't attack us uh which grants join faction tension limit plus 100 percent send volunteers tension limit plus all right so it would increase tension if we went against what well, against being neutral i'm trying to figure this out yeah, so if we join a faction, it would increase the tension. It would add 100% to the tension limit. Sending volunteers would add 20%, guaranteeing someone would add 100%. AI modifier, threat receptive. So the AI would be less likely to, to be in or expand a faction if they were on this focus, possibly. I don't know. It also gives us political power. And then we create deterrences, and then we stop people fighting us that way. Okay, interesting. Or we can go interventionist uh, focus, which allows us to send volunteer forces. We then uh, get this, which means that uh, grants divisions required for sending volunteer forces. So it lowers the cost for divisions. I don't know. And then this one lowers it again. And basically this is about intervening with other people's wars. Okay. Collectivist allows us to maybe go national focus where we can get fascism support or internationalism focus that gets us communist support and then similar things all the way down until we get to the end, same kind of end bit. Okay, cool. And then the rest of it's kind of where we'd want to be focusing in wars. So like, would we want to be in an army effort? Would we want to be industrial? Would we want to be naval? Would we want to be aviation? That sort of stuff. As far as I can tell. So industrial seems like it would be a good idea because it would give a research boost to industry things. And then we could start doing things like uh, armament, armament efforts where we get more building slots, adds military factories, or construction efforts where it gives us more civilian factories. And we can keep going down these things and getting lots and lots of factories and then uh, attempting to do other stuff there. 
Like, it might be a good idea to go down construction effort and just build as many um, civilian factories as we can and really push our, um, like, our production speed up. I don't know. I think industrial seems like a good idea. I don't think we need to focus on army or aviation, but I assume they do the same kind of thing for research bonuses. Uh, yeah, except that naval gives us three naval dockyards. Cool, so that's if we really want to go heavy navy, which we might want to do, but I want to go industrial first. Cool. We'll start that as our focus. Right. Uh, no divisions and basic training. We should probably train some. So what are these uh, things? Um, I have absolutely no idea what the difference between these two things is. Or any of these. Uh, I assume we just go for basic infantry. Or if we have to click edit. Okay, so that's what that one is. So that's just uh, six infantry, engineer, and support artillery. We go for the other one. It's two infantry. Okay. What is the difference? They Oh, these are elite ones. They receive equipment for anyone else. Uh, and at the highest priority. Use your best men where they can do the most good. Okay. So this would be if we're creating elite units. I just think we should create some basic units. So we have um, 168k free kind of manpower. Okay. Um... How much does it cost for one unit? Do we see that anywhere? Uh, that's production costs. Uh, no manpower costs. Oh, there it is. Uh, 6,600. Okay, so we can maybe train like 10 divisions. Uh, well, how about 5? Just go for the size of the box and assume that's about right. Set deployment locations for this, de this deployment. So let's build them all in Lisbon, maybe. Just all of them in Lisbon. See if that'll do anything at all. Okay, try that. Alright, uh, next one would be insufficient resources. So, what are we missing? We are missing two oil, one aluminium, and eight steel. So, this is who we want to trade with. So, we're missing two oil. Who has oil? Well, uh, to sort by most, we have United States, Soviet Union has oil. If we're going to go communist, I assume that, I think that's where I'm leaning towards. We probably want to start trading with the Soviet Union. Because they'll presumably be the biggest communist kind of group outside of... Uh, well, they'll just be the biggest communist group and they have a lot of resources. So, if we can trade with them, that'll be good. So, set to the amount we need. Uh, it costs us eight, one for civilian factories. This deal will be used factories currently constructing buildings. Okay. Um, what happens if we lower this? Um, okay, it just goes up in like factors of eight, or can we slide it anywhere for it? No, it just factories, just amount of eight. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's just try and get the. It says we need these resources. Let's just try and get them. Aluminium. We need one aluminium. Who has aluminium? We have hungry. Soviet Union has more aluminium. We could try trading with them. Uh, and again, we'll just we'll buy some more. What we're looking for is steel. Steel. Who has steel? Uh, Soviet Union. Once again, they have some steel. Do we have anyone who have more influence with who has steel? Uh, Yugoslavia has some steel. They don't have enough for us. Greece has some steel. We could perhaps get a supply from Greece. Yeah, let's try someone else. Just get some from Greece. There we go. That should give us enough, in theory. Uh, no production. Okay, equipment required for division reinforcements. Artillery. So we have no artillery um, like being produced. Therefore, our, um, our divisions can't have any artillery in them. Makes sense. Let's build some artillery. And we will um, give it more priority. There we go. What are we missing for that then? It uses zero units of tungsten and uses zero units of steel. Um, there are no military factories put towards it yet. Can I say like I want a factory put towards it or? Um, yeah, I guess we just don't have any military factories yet, but once we do, it will start building artillery. Cool, cool. Um, well, this seems like a good point to end the episode. Thank you for watching as this is the first episode in the series. Please like, dislike, comment, share, do whatever you can to it if really helps with search ranking. 
and I'm really excited to get this started. So, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.